understand what do I mean when I say an animal. So an ant, an eagle, a squid, a jellyfish, a dolphin, these are all examples of animals. And animals, if you look on this phylogenetic tree here, it's a very generalized phylogenetic tree. You've got the major domains, bacteria and archaea listed here that are sort of grayed out. And then we've got the eukaryotes here. And so these are all eukaryote groups here. And you can see there's a couple major groups, the fungi, the plants, and of course the animals in blue. And all these other orange groups of eukaryotes are considered to be protists. So animals are their own eukaryotic group that sort of break out on this tree that are sort of closely related to this group called coanoflagellates and this other group, the fungi. And so when we talk about animals, what we're talking about are eukaryotic organisms. These organisms, animals, do not have cell walls. So their individual cells do not have cell walls. And all animals are multicellular, so though they can have unicellular life stages. So like, for example, our sperm is a unicellular life stage. All animals are multicellular. Um, they're also all heterotrophic. So that means that basically they get their energy from eating others. So hetero means other, troph means sort of like your energy source or your food source. So they have to eat others to survive. And the other thing that unites all the animals, even though they are a very diverse group, is that they're motile. And motile just means they're able to move under their own power. So whether you're crawling or swimming or flying, they're all able to move. That's something that's unique about animals. So when we think about animals and when they evolved, so going back to this sort of generalized figure that summarizes all the major sort of major evolutionary events that have happened in the history of life on Earth, you can see that animals uh, appeared in the fossil record. We had huge sort of animal diversification um, about 550 million years ago. So here is when we see the diversification of animals. And if we were to once again put this entire 4.5 billion year history of life on Earth and squeeze it onto a 30-day calendar with Earth forming on the last day, it wouldn't be until about the 27th day that animals come onto the scene. So pretty late into the game that we see sort of abundant diversification of animal life. And another important thing to know about animals is the distinction between vertebrates versus invertebrates. So these are two major sort of groups or classifications of animals. And the big thing that sort of separates the vertebrates versus the invertebrates like this Sir Mix-a-Lot song, Baby Got Back, but in this case, we're talking about a backbone. So vertebrates have a backbone, whereas invertebrates do not. So examples or common examples of vertebrates might be meerkats or eagles or hamsters or dolphins or a cheetah or a fish. All of these things, if you looked at their skeleton, they have a spinal column, they have a backbone. So these are considered to be vertebrate animals. And this is in opposition to or opposed to invertebrate animals. And so all of these things are examples of animals. They are considered animals, but they don't have a backbone. So they're invertebrate animals. So things like insects, crustaceans, jellyfish, sea anemones, uh, sponges. These are all examples of animals, um, but all of these things do not have a backbone. They're considered invertebrate animals. And so when we talk about the challenges that animals face for osmoregulation, You've got to think about the different habitats that animals live in, whether it's saltwater, freshwater, terrestrial, and then the types of osmoregulation challenges that each of those habitats present. So, for example, if you're in a saltwater habitat, if you're a jellyfish or if you're a dolphin, you're in a super hypertonic environment relative to your cells, typically. And the major thing that you've got to deal with is this water loss and potentially electrolyte gain, so potentially salts getting into your cells too. And so we'll learn about some of the adaptations that these organisms have to deal with that. Um, when you're talking about freshwater organisms, it's the opposite situation where you're in a hypotonic, situ uh, hypotonic environment where there's less solutes in the water. So we're not in salt water anymore, we're in fresh water. And so in this situation, the big sort of pressures that the animals are dealing with is water gain and potentially electrolyte loss to the environment as well. And then lastly, if you're in a terrestrial environment, really the big thing that you're dealing with or animals are dealing with is evaporative water loss. So this could be water loss through the skin, through sweat, through breathing, through your lungs or out into the environment and through urine and feces. So you may have heard the uh, expression, a hot steaming pile of dung, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. But that steam that's rising off it, that's water that's been lost from this organism's body. And like, like you can see, 
this wolf howling here, that's water being lost. That's water vapor being lost from that animal's lungs. This guy sweating here, that's water being lost from your body. And so lung sweating, urine, feces, all of those things result in water and electrolyte loss. And so that's another thing that terrestrial animals have to deal with uh, to, in terms of osmoregulation. And so in all of these cases, you know, osmoregulation is all about water and electrolytes in, balancing out the water and electrolytes out. So if you're osmoregulating, you need to balance the water and electrolytes you lose with the water and electrolytes you gain. And so what we're going to do today in today's quiz that's linked with this lecture is basically you guys need to figure out these major three things. These are the major three objectives that you should be learning by the time you finish today's quiz. Number one, what are the inputs and outputs of water and electrolytes for animals in different environments, whether you're in marine, freshwater, or land? Uh, number two, what two general strategies have animals evolved to face these challenges? So you'll learn about these two general strategies that animals have evolved. And lastly, what are some of the specific adaptations that animals have evolved to aid in osmoregulation? We'll especially learn about them in bony fish, in freshwater and saltwater environments. And so to learn all this stuff, you guys are going to need to read pages 877 to 881 in your textbook. So this is section 39.1 in your textbook. And you're going to want to read that stuff once through before you take the quiz. And then you're going to complete this animal osmoregulation quiz. So essentially you'll answer those quiz questions. Um, and you can work with others on this quiz, but you've got to submit one per an individual. So you've got to submit it individually. And yes, this quiz is an open book quiz, but please, please, please take your time to learn this stuff. You're only cheating yourself if you're really rushing through the quiz and rushing through the readings because it's going to be really important that you understand the reading of section 39.1 and the sort of ideas that are being conveyed there. So good luck.